Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, another session of Patriki Partshala. Basically, uh, taking up a few concepts on quant mathematics and looking at some approaches or shortcut methods that you can solve it. I mean, it'll help you with regards to different exam or different uh, any aptitude examination. So this is not specifically for CAT. It is useful for CAT definitely, but the concepts are simple and can be used for any examination. The basic focus is to help you save time, right? Now, since we have still have time, we will start in a few minutes. Uh, I'll let you know, we will start and then maybe we can go ahead with it. So, as I said, the focus is to get methods that will help you to save time. So, five minutes to go and we will start with the session. Right. Uh, do give me a feedback regarding my previous session, how it was, what it was. If you require any other sessions, any other type of sessions, you let me know. I can accordingly maybe inculcate. I could accordingly inculcate that in my sessions and then help you. Uh, if you have any specific area that you want me to connect, I will do that. Yeah, hi Abhishek Mishra. Uh, good. Just to add. Now, just give me a minute. Uh, just uh, sorry. Yeah. So we start in some time. To uh, tell you exactly, uh, yeah, hi Nidhi. Um, yeah, so in another three minutes left, so we'll start in another three minutes. If you have any specific question that you want me to cover right now regarding anything, uh, uh, preparation, etc., uh, I'll be glad to cover it. If you have any queries, put in the chat box and I'll try to cover that topic as far as possible or try to answer the query which is there. Uh, if you feel that you need anything, do let me know and I will try to inculcate that as far as the session is concerned right uh, just to give you a brief today we are looking at basically progression specifically arithmetic progression right so we will look at a specific concept or a, some concepts in arithmetic progression that should hopefully help you to solve faster okay uh, one question uh, nishi has asked uh, how do you how do you revise topics uh, normally what happens is if you have marked a particular question beforehand okay saying that these are the questions uh you when you solve that these are the questions i should go to it again then go back to those questions that's how you can revise one secondly maybe you can take a few new questions and then try to revise those topics right i would normally recommend that you focus on revision on only those topics which you feel you're not comfortable with okay and uh, practice those topics revision and then go to the mocks and then practice mixed question. That's how you go. Topics you're already comfortable with, maybe you need not spend too much time. Don't spend too much time on revision. One month is more than enough for revision. Just focus on topics which you're not comfortable with and that should hopefully help you. Um, no harm in going back to the same questions uh, as long as you're marked it. But don't go to exactly all the same questions. If you feel you're already exhausted your question that you've already gone to, Take some new book or new notes and then practice a few questions out there. Remember you are revising. So that means the number of questions that you will take during revision should be much lower than what you take in the actual session. Yeah, hi Rohan. Good evening. Just a minute. Sorry. Um, so we start in another minute. Uh, We'll go about it. Yeah, and she, you can join the offline batch. The offline batches are there. As of now, you can join the batches if you want. No harm in joining the batches. Okay, so we start with the session. So. As I said, today what we'll be doing is we'll be basically taking arithmetic progression as a topic. Uh, take a few questions on arithmetic progression 
the basic idea again i repeat the basic idea of these sessions is to find out ways to try to solve things faster you know to try to solve in lesser time as possible so if you can save time in mathematics one thing is important is if you can save time you will be able to solve more questions right uh, that's the key i mean the normally if you look at the people who scored really high marks are the ones who can solve almost all the questions in the exam whereas the students who scored normally a 99 percentile know how to solve all the questions but don't have time to solve all the questions they end up maybe solving half the number of questions a little more than half the number of questions reason is because of the time factor again the reason is because they take more time to solve the existing questions so idea of these sessions basically to help maybe to get that understanding of uh, how to solve things a little fast as far as possible so again today we are going to take arithmetic progression where difference in the numbers is same so if i look at numbers 3 5 7 9 11 the difference in the numbers is same that's arithmetic progression the specific formulas for arithmetic progression uh, i normally recommend students that when you do arithmetic progression always start with the average average is nothing but the middle number okay average is nothing but the middle number or it is first number plus last number divided by 2 this is the average average is nothing but the middle number or first number plus last number divided by 2 say there are five numbers out here so what is the average uh you can take five numbers so take 5 plus 1 upon 2 third number will be the average 5 plus 1 upon 2 third number will be the average that means 7 is the average the middle number is the average so middle number is the third number right or you can do this so middle number is the third number which is 7 or you can do this first number plus last number divided by 2 which is 7 i doubt it middle number 7 first number plus last number divided by 2 7 how do you find a middle number the way to find what is the middle number is find number of numbers plus 1 divided by 2 will give you the middle number if the even number of numbers say like say 3 5 7 9 middle number is the average of the middle two numbers in this case 6 middle number will be the average of middle two numbers 6 okay once you get the average formula the sum of the numbers is equal to average into n sum of the numbers is nothing but average into n so in this specific number 7 is the average five numbers 35 average is 7 either middle number of first number plus last number divided by 2 into number of numbers 5 that will give you sum how do you find d this is what how do you find d in this case so i have this number 3 first term is 3 and let's say fifth term is 11 how do you find d so from first to fifth term which is four terms your difference is 3 to 11 which is 8 from first to fifth term which is four terms your difference is 8 so d comes to 8 divided by 4 which is 2 b comes to 8 that is eight numbers divided by 4 divided by so which means if i want to say find eight number i'm just giving example if i want to find eight number i mean i have to go three more numbers ahead so i have to go ahead 3 into 2 Six ahead, so eleven plus six, seventeen is the eight number. Okay, so if I want to find an eight number, that is three numbers ahead. I have to go three numbers ahead. D of two, so three into two, six ahead. So eleven to plus six will give you seventeen as the number. That's how you work out. So I hope it's sort of clear. Let's solve the sums and try to understand better. But these are the concepts they're going to use. One is the average. One is the sum. And one is the finding of D, as such. Right. Yeah. Try to solve this. Uh, put the answer in the chat box. Hi, Manu. So we said earlier, average. What we said average is, so I said we always start with average. We say average is the middle number, or average is the first plus last divided by two. Either one, right? So average is given to you, nineteen feet. Tallest is given to you, thirty-seven. 
So you have to just find the first number. So first number, let's say x, first number, let's say x, plus last number 37 upon 2 is 90. So 38 is equal to x plus 37 or x equal to 1. Second option. So what we do is we start with the average, average is the middle number. It's also the first plus last number divided by 2. Use that concept. So automatically you get the, you know the last number, you know the middle number, which is, you know the average. Substitute that, automatically you get the first number. Okay, you will get the answer as second option, which is 1. Right. Good, Nishi, good. So done. So we'll take few sum, we'll go with the complexity, slightly more complex. Last sum will be a cat sum. Uh, but yeah, we will as and when we go ahead, we will try to take a little bit more difficult sums, but uh, something that will help you solve faster. Look, the key is not that you can solve the sum or not. The key is how to solve things fast. That's what's important. Okay. Right? The key is how to solve things fast. Okay. Let's look at this. First 12 odd numbers. Okay. First odd number is 1, right? Twelfth odd number will be 12 into 2, 24 minus 1, 23. First odd number is 1. Like first even number is 2, so odd number is minus 1, 1. Twelfth even number is 24, odd number will be minus 1, 23. You want sum. Again the same. What we said sum was? Sum was the thing but average into number of numbers. What is the average? First term plus last term divided by 2 into number of numbers, 12. 1 plus 23 upon 2 into 12. So if you solve this, so you will get 12 into 12, which is 144. If you do this orally, it will be obviously much faster. You know 12 odd numbers. First odd number is 1, last odd number is 23. So average is 1 plus 23 upon 2, which is 12, into number of numbers 12, you will get 144. Good. Yeah, good, Nishi. Yeah, good, this is done. Uh, the key is to basically, I am trying to help you use a particular concept in different type of sums, so that you can get used to it and that help you solve things faster. The idea is that. Okay. Specific concepts to be used in different type of sums. So this was a sum which I had seen somewhere okay. and just took it up because the way it was solved was slightly complicated. Okay, The way it was solved was uh, slightly complicated. So let's look at an easy way of trying to solve it. Right. So as I said, sum taken up from particular place. Uh, so how do we solve it? Again, as I said, we always start with, we want to find sum. And I said sum, we will take as the average into n. Right? Sum is nothing but average into n. Uh, technically, if I say uh, 27, because n is 27, average should most probably be an integer, most likely. I'm not saying it is, but it can, most probably an integer. So you can directly make that a sum has to be a multiple of 27 and then look at the option. That's one way of doing it. Okay, but let's look at others. Okay. Um, average. So average of middle three numbers. The middle three numbers sum. Sum of the middle three numbers. So you have many numbers which are there. The middle three numbers also will be in arithmetic progression. The sum is 30. So the average will be 10. The average of the middle three numbers is 10. And average of military numbers will also be the average of the order numbers because the middle number of the whole thing. I repeat again. Suppose you have 27, say, I'm just giving an example, 27 number of series. So the middle number will be 27 plus 1 upon 2, which is the 14 term. 14 term is the middle number. So 13, 14, and 15 are the three middle numbers which are there. Their sum is 30. Now these middle three numbers will also be in arithmetic progression. Because they are arithmetic progression, right? So the average will be 14 number, which is 10. The average is 30 upon 3, which is 10, which is the 14 number. And the 14 number will be average of all the numbers. 
if 14 numbers are average of all the numbers, it is 10. So sum will be 10 into 27 to 70. Third option. Right. I repeat again, the middle number is the 14 number. So middle three numbers are 13, 14, 15. So from that, the average of these three numbers, which is also an AP, will be 30 upon 310. Which is the middle number 14 and 14 also is the middle number of all 27 numbers. So sum will be average into n. Right. So average is 27 into 10. So average is 10 into number of numbers 27, which will give you 270. Right, machine. Good. So arithmetic progression, okay, given the fifth term, tenth, go to find the second term. Okay, we know the fifth term, we know the tenth term. So not difficult. Fifth term is known, and tenth term is known. What is fifth term? Twenty-four. What is tenth term? Forty-four. So if you look at five terms, in five terms, the difference is becoming twenty. So D is 20 upon 5, which is 4. In 5 terms, the difference is becoming 20. So which means D will be 20 upon 5, which is 4. Right. Now I want a second term, which means I have to go back 3 terms. I have to go back 3 terms means I have to subtract 3 into 4 because D is 4. So every term you go back, you have to subtract 4. So when you're going back 3 terms, you have to subtract 3 into 4. That is subtract 12. So 24 minus 12 will give you 12 as a second. First option. Right? 5 terms, the difference is 20. So D is 4. That is 20 upon 5, 4. So when I'm going back from 5th to 2nd term, I'm going back 3 terms. If I'm going back 3 terms, so 3 into 4, because D is 4. So I have to subtract 12 from a number. So 24 minus 12 will give you 12. Yeah, so good Vishnu, good Siddharth. Right, next. So we'll use the same concept. So average into n. As I said, we'll use the same. Try to solve it. In the time that you get, if you can solve it, solve it. Key is to try to go fast as far as possible. So we're looking at methods to solve things faster. So you have 11 terms of the progression. As I said, we are using a sum which is average into n. n we know 11. We have to find average. So when you say 11 terms, the average will be 11 plus 1 upon 2. Sixth term is the average. When you say 11 terms, averages, add 1 and divide by 2, that will give you the average. So in this case, sixth term is the average. If you notice properly, the average of third and ninth also is 6. 3 plus 9 upon 2 is 6. So average of third term and ninth term will give you sixth term. The average of third term and ninth term will also give you sixth term. So sum of third term and ninth term is 8 upon 2, which will give you 6th term. So 6th term will give you 4 as well. So I know 6th term is 4, which is the average. So average is 6th term. How do you find 6th term? 6th term is nothing but first term plus last, sorry, uh, four, uh, last 11 term plus 1 divided by 2. 6th term is the average. How do you get average 6th term? Third term plus 9. 3 plus 9 upon 2 is 6. So third term plus ninth term upon two will give you sixth term. So third term we know, sum of third term and ninth term we know eight. Divided by two will give you the sixth term, which is four. So automatically average is four, n is eleven, so that gives you forty-four. Yeah, Vishnu, good. First option, right? Average is four, n is eleven. You will get the answer as forty-four.
similar to the sum one we solved earlier. Okay, sort of similar to the sum we solved. Now these what concepts I'm using out here, it can be used in multiple sums later. I've just taken a few type of sums to solve out here, but the application of these methods can be used in a many number of AP sums. Almost almost all the sums of AP can be used, can be solved by using this particular way of so. Yeah, try solving this, try to get the answer. Put in a chat box. So if you look at it, uh, you have seven term, which is minus twenty-four. You have fifteen term, which is minus sixty-four. It means when you're going forward eight terms, you're going to minus forty. Right. So if you're going forward. Eight terms, you're going minus forty. So D will be nothing but minus forty upon eight, which is minus five. Now I have to go from fifteen term to I have to go to twenty-seven term. Right, fifteen term to I have to go to twenty-seven term, which means I have to go forward twelve terms. So I have to go forward twelve terms. It is twelve into minus five, minus sixty. Because D is minus five, so twelve terms into minus five, minus sixty. So you get minus one twenty four, fourth option. Right. Good Vishnu, good Vardhan, good Kostu. Yeah. So here again, from seven term to fifteen term, which is a difference of eight terms, you get minus forty. So that means D you get as minus five. So automatically, when you go on to go from fifteen term to twenty seven term, which is twelve terms, so you will have to go ahead twelve into minus five. Which is minus sixty, right? So when you say minus sixty, so sixty minus sixty four minus sixty will give you minus one twenty four. That will be the answer. Yeah. Sum of first fifteen terms of the AP whose eleven and seven terms are given as five point two five and three point two five. Now first fifteen terms of AP. So if you look at it, uh, what is the middle term? Like we know that sum, we know that sum is equal to average into n. Always go from the question what is asked. And normally you have to go from the question what is asked. That's the easier way of solving it because then you know exactly what you want, right? Uh, yeah, thanks, Raj. So n number of terms is fifteen. You have to find the average. You get a sum. So what is the average? Which term is average? The fifteen terms. So 15 plus 1, 16 upon 2 will give you the eight term will be the average. 15 plus 1, 16 upon 2 will be eight term is the average. I know seven term is 3.25. 11 term is 5.25. Which means when I go four terms, I'm going ahead two. So D will be two upon four, which is 0.5. It means now if I want the eight term going ahead one term, I have to add zero point two five zero point five. Sorry, D is point five. You get three point seven five. Okay, when I want to go ahead one term, I have to add zero point five. So repeat seven to eleven terms, four terms you are adding two. So D becomes two upon four. Two point four is point five. So when you want to go to seven to eight term, one term you will add point five, which is three point seven five. So average is three point seven five. So three point seven five to fifteen, you can do three point seven five into ten plus three point seven five into five. I'm just writing it down. This is thirty seven point five. This will be half of thirty seven point five, which is one eight point seven five. 
So get added up, you'll get 56.25, which is first option. That's the answer. Right? 56.25. Yeah, good Rajesh, good Vardhan. You'll get 56.25. So again, four terms, the difference is two. So D becomes 0 0.5. So if seven term is 3.25, eight term will be plus 0.5, which is 3.75. Use that eight term is the average. As we said, average is nothing but the eight term, 3.75. So average into n number of terms will give you the sum. So 3.75 anyway is the average. n is 15. Use that, you will get 36.25 as the answer. I'm not saying the same sum, but similar concept. Come in the cat. You can use it out here. So Raj, every class I will take one specific topic in it. So today we are taking arithmetic progression. I have already taken three sessions before. Different methods. One I have taken time to distance ratio method, work ratio method. So I have taken three. It is the fourth session. So three session videos will be there already on YouTube. You can go to it. On the subs you will get subscribe to the channel, you can get the videos, you can go to the videos for the first three sessions. Okay. Yeah. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, AB a sequence of consecutive odd numbers. And consecutive new sequence of five consecutive even numbers ending in 2A3. Sum of the number in new sequence is 450. If sum is 450, what we said, sum is equal to average into n and always start with average so average will be sum upon n which is 450 upon 5 which is 90. so always start with the average 90. if i say average is 90 that is the sum of five even numbers 90 will be the middle number the new new series which is there so it will be even numbers ending in 280. So 90, 92, 94 ending in 94. And 94 is 283. So what will be 83? 83 will be 94 upon 2, 47. Okay. 83 will be 94 upon 2, 47. And again I repeat. Uh, the average is 90. Average will be middle number 90. If average is the middle number 90, that means it will be 90 to 94. So last number will be 94. 94 will be 283. If 94 is 283, then A3 will be 47. If A3 is 47, so which is the middle term of the old series? What is asked? We want A5, the last term. It's a consecutive odd numbers. 47, 49, it will be 51. That will be the answer. It will be 51. That is the answer. Right? Because 83 is the middle now term which is there. So again, the idea is to find the middle term. You start with the average. So in, whenever you have arithmetic progression sum, you can always start with the average and then go ahead. That is much easier to solve. And that's how you get the answer. Not too much, this you can do in your mind, it will not take much time if you are comfortable with calculation in your mind. Good techniques will always help you to be fast. And the moment you have good techniques and you are used to it, you will always be able to crack the examination. Right? I hope this was useful. Uh, as I said, I will take up concepts every week. So every Thursday is where we are taking up a concept and trying to solve it. So at around 9.30. We may change the time in the future, but right now the timing is Thursday 9.30. Uh, the previous videos are there on YouTube. You can go through it. Glad to. Any comments, any recommendations, anything that you want, please feel free to contact us. Thank you.